Hey everyone, I had to wait for a little shade today because it was literally so hot in this corner uh, that my camera would just shut off after like a couple of minutes. So anyhow, we'll give this a shot in the evening. Now, some of you, I can almost see the smile on your face because you know exactly what we're going to do today based on what you see in front of you. Now, if you don't know what this is, uh, well, let me give you a hint. This cap is made of pre-famulated amulite. Did that help? No? Okay. Well, if you still don't know, you'll have to Google it, but this is a turbo encabulator. And today we're going to use it as a, uh, as a power comparative apparatus for the 1025R. Now, why do we need a power comparative or comparison apparatus? Well, as you can see here, we're at a stock configuration, no turbo, no uh, missing a, a few guards, but power-wise, this thing is basically stock. Uh, as we come over here, you can see that it hasn't even been tampered with. Oh, whoops. Yeah, I guess maybe a little bit, but before the tampering happened, we uh, made sure we marked where things were. And um, if you watched the last video, this is the one thing that you don't have to do, but you may choose to do. And I think everybody's going to choose to to modify. That is uh, uh, irrevocable, I guess, is how you might say it. We could probably come up with something that goes back on there, but you know, that is what it is um, And well, I guess if you wanted to be really uh, Slick, I mean you put that thing on there with a little bit of epoxy and uh, as long as nobody tries to pull it off You wouldn't actually know it had been changed. But anyway, I'm not suggesting you do that but if you decide you want to make a modification then uh, to fuel then, then you're going to need to take that piece off. That is on there intentionally. And, and what I've learned about, I say I've learned, I've confirmed, it's probably what we would expect. These engines obviously come from Myanmar, used on John Deere and many other applications, but uh, not every single one of them is uh, tested to make sure that it passes emissions. They just use a, they have a, a lab that they configure an engine and then they uh, make all the other engines like that and every so often they'll take an engine off the off the assembly line and make sure that it's it passing emissions if it's not then they'll make some adjustments now one big thing when it comes to diesels is this screw and actually we'll take this off so you know what you're looking at Without going into too much detail, here's effectively what happens. You've got injectors, three, right? They push fuel in here, and then there's a rack. And that rack determines how much fuel they can get on every pulse. And as you move it, it gets more and more. That's it in a very uh, small nutshell. And by adjusting that screw, you're basically opening that rack up a little bit more so that every time that it, it asks for fuel, it can get just a little bit more. And then obviously when the governor kicks in, it also affects that as well. So that is the piece that you're gonna have to change or gonna have to modify if you decide to modify. Otherwise, you won't have to change anything on this tractor, maybe before anybody asks. This, this was for my testing. I didn't change it out for this particular test because uh, I didn't, it's, it's not necessary. It's just crankcase ventilation. So back over to here in our, I wanted to start with this video and this can be our baseline, uh, but we're not gonna do the turbo today because uh, well, it takes some setup time and we gotta switch things over. So I'm gonna start with this video and maybe take pieces of it and stitch into the uh, the final video that shows how much power we actually are able to create. Now, for those of you who have seen either a system like this, and I don't know if I said it, but if you don't know what a turbo encabulator is, just Google it. You'll, it's a very interesting machine. 
but let's just for the time being refer to this as our power comparison apparatus because that's really what it is. It uses hydraulic flow. This is a 20 gallon hydraulic, uh, 20 gallon per minute hydraulic pump, and that's supposed to be at 540 RPMs. I'm seeing a little more than 20 gallons per minute with the the flow meter that I have. I'll be honest with you, I've got a number of flow meters, and uh, they they give you a good reading, I would say. I'm not trying to say that they're wrong, but you have to make sure that everything's in the right spot. I can't even, I don't know, you're going to shake this around, this little piece of paper can move around. So you have to make sure that everything is exactly where it's supposed to be and, you know, stuff passes the sniff test as well. But then we also have pressure. Um, so I've got flow, pressure, and if you have flow, pressure, and then a coefficient, you can actually determine how much horsepower you're creating. Now, let me start by saying that this, as far as a horsepower measurement device, is wrong. It's not going to be right. And uh, the reason it's not going to be right is because you've got variables of flow, potentially of pressure, and then you've got efficiency. Um, I know that there's a, a co basically the, the formula is, is pressure or pressure times flow uh, divided by 1714, but that does not take into consideration uh, basically efficiency. And it doesn't work, I would say, I don't think it works in this way, because what we're actually asking is how much power is needed to add to the pump to create, uh, you know, or how much power do you get when you, when you have this input? General rule of thumb is, is one gallon per minute at 1500 PSI takes one horsepower. That is different. That's a different answer than you're going to get if you simply do the mathematical formula of pressure or flow times pressure uh, divided by 1714. And that is because there is uh, a challenge of efficiency. Um, so without all that said, just remember this, it's wrong, but what it's good at is comparing. That's why it's a power comparison apparatus, not a power calculation, whatever you want to call it. This, if, if we get one horsepower or 10 horsepower from this in stock and we get 15 horsepower with a turbo, then we know that it is 50% more uh, efficient or more powerful than then the stock tractor, the turbo is 50% is more powerful than the stock. Doesn't really matter what the horsepower reads. And because of that, I, I am doing some math that actually uses a coefficient that, that basically says, look, this tractor at stock is about 18 PTO horsepower. That's what we're gonna use. We can use any coefficient, it doesn't matter. Uh, whether, and if it says that this tractor produces 25 or 10, doesn't matter. It's the difference that we care about. So all that said, uh, I'm basically calibrating it to what tractor data says, as well as John Deere's website, which is it's got about 18 horsepower at the PTO. Um, I know if you watch the tractor time with Tim video, uh, there is a, it, it works on the same principle. The difference is, is you cannot see flow and you cannot see pressure with theirs what you, it was already pre-calibrated. So I think with the, with the Kubota BX and uh, the John Deere 1 series, they saw something on the order of 25 PTO horsepower, uh, even, even stock. So I'm not saying that's wrong, maybe right, I don't know. But what I am saying is that if they weren't exactly at 540 RPMs, then that calibration is off one way or another. And again, I haven't thought about it hard enough to know uh, what the effects of that might be. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, what, what I care about is not what the number is, but how much are we going to get uh, more if you add a turbo. So what's your money buying you? Not necessarily what you would, um, you know, what the, the, the bragging number is. You can make that one up, I don't really care. Um, okay, so let's go ahead, start this guy up, and you know what, one thing, because I am using my phone, I need a calculator, I'm going to go get one of those and I'll be right back. 
All right, here we go. I've got a calculator now. And I've got it set here at uh, at basically idle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the PTO on. I'm going to show you what's going on, and then we'll get a little bit meaner. So we've got the PTO. I've got it uh, basically extended out just because it's really close to the to the back there without extending it. But uh, we've got. A hydraulic flow flow comes into here pressure and then a flow restrictor right so right now our flow restrictor is creating about 300 psi we can bring this on down to give ourselves i don't know let's see but as i restrict it of course we'll get even more we'll lose a little bit of flow up to a thousand going to make our math a little easier. So, can I get to a thousand? So, see, as, I, as I get to a certain point, I start to lose too much uh, RPM. So let's say at 10 gallons a minute, we can do nine. That's right. We'll call it 950. And we're actually only running 230 on the PTO. So, if I do that math, let's see here, sorry. It is uh, 10 times, what's it going? We'll call it 950. So, 9,500 is the multiplication of the flow and the pressure. And the coefficient I'm using is 0 0.0009. So, right now, we're going to do 850. Eight and a half horsepower is what it's taking to turn this, even though it's only turning at 230 uh, RPMs. That's what it takes to run this. Now, if we were to take this and run it up a little bit higher, we don't even have enough. You know, you saw our RPMs were down at about 1300. Now it's wide open, I can only muster about 300 RPMs on the back. That'll give us more pressure here. 1,500, and we're getting about uh, 12, a little over 12 gallons per minute now. And so by doing our math, yeah, okay. what is it? 15 and 1,500. Um, 12.5 times that by my coefficient. So this is actually taking 17 horsepower, 16.8 horsepower, to turn that. We're lugging the engine, of course. You're not blowing black smoke, which is good. But we're also not at 540 RPMs. So, that's okay. Back this guy off. Actually, to keep it there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back the pressure off here. Let's see. I'm gonna back the pressure off until I get to about 20 gallons a minute. Now that's still not gonna be at 540 RPMs. But, We're at 20 here. I can't read above that, so I'm going to stay at 20. I'm at about a thousand RP or a thousand psi. 480. So a thousand times 20. Let me back this off a little bit more. We're going to get to uh, 830. We're still just at 500, but as you can see, we're above our, our mark. Okay, so I hope you get the point. Since I only have 20, I'm basically running it to 20. That means we didn't quite make 540, but we know what our pressure was, which is, it was oscillating between about 950 and 1000. So for this, 
hang on. My, my calculator is my son's phone. So it's basically 20,000, so 1,000 times 20 gallons per minute, and I'm times that by my coefficient, and it's right at 18. Uh, it's probably a little less than 18. I mean, you, you saw that it oscillated between about 950 and maybe 1020. So if I, if I you know, did those numbers, it'd be a little more than 18 or a little less than 18, but you get the point. And this is, this is the tractor as it was set up stock. Um, of course, not precisely stock, just based on the marks that I have. And of course, if you decide to put the turbo on and not change that, I haven't done the, the, the power settings. If you're already burning all of the fuel that's available, then you're not going to gain more horsepower, significantly more horsepower, at least at the higher RPMs. At the lower RPMs, you're going to be able to, to put a little bit more fuel in, I believe. The way, based on the way the governor is going to work, uh, we'll see how, how that works and, and what those horsepower readings are at the different, um, at the different RPMs. But from what I've been able to notice with the tractor, and I pretty much run it with the screw almost all the way out, uh, I'm seeing a whole lot more low end. A lot more top end, but the only thing that really uh, pulls it on the top end, and well, I have, by the way, I have this as a temp gauge. I should probably check just to make sure. Uh, yeah, so operating temp of the fluid, which I already knew it was was well above 100. Just, we don't want it to be over 180 because then we're gonna start to see some loss in efficiency, and that could affect some of the numbers that we see. But all that to say, uh, that this is roughly. Uh, the 2380, the, the BX2380, basically the same as this tractor at the PTO. Uh, you know, and again, power wise, I can't be for sure that we're actually, of course, the airplane goes over, that, that 18 is the right number. That's, that's made up. Just think of it as a relative term. But I can tell you that the, at least for this particular tractor, before it w I changed anything, as well as the BX, they, they're they basically the same at the PTO horsepower wise. And that's generally true um, from what tractor data says. Now, one thing that is different is that the BX is a one liter and this engine is a 1.3, which everybody knows there's no replacement for displacement, but in a diesel, if you don't have enough fuel for it, it doesn't matter. And you can certainly get more power. Uh, you can get the same amount of power out of a smaller engine uh, as long as you get enough fuel to it and you can get enough air into it. Clearly that's the case. And that's also why the 1023 has a 0.9 liter engine. And power wise, it is, you know, the way it's tuned is effectively the same as the 1025. There might be a half or one horsepower difference, but all of it is, has to do with how much fuel that you're giving to it as well as i'm like pointing back here the timing timing does matter and we're not going to obviously mess with timing from a turbo point of view now if you want to do that that's up to you but that gets a whole lot more complicated uh adding fuel and adding air is the easiest and i think once you get a chance to run this turbo uh you probably don't even the way it's set up right now once if you decide to give it more fuel you're probably not going to run, want to run your tractor that much harder than it can run. It, it'll it'll scream on you uh, at about 10 psi of boost. Uh, it feels like it's doing what it wants to do. So that's it for today's video. I hope uh, I hope it was informative. You'll see this again uh, very shortly if you're watching this live or you know as it comes out. And uh, we'll throw the turbo on, get a lot more air, add some fuel and I'll show you what results we get. Questions, comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching.